Welcome back to the Urology Care Podcast. Today, our guest is Dr. Melissa Mendez. She's a urologist with Chesapeake Urology in Maryland, and I'm going to have her introduce herself and tell us a little bit about her work right now. Thank you so much. I'm Dr. Melissa Mendez. I'm a fellowship trained specialist in sexual dysfunction, genital reconstruction, andrology, and male infertility. And as you said, I work at Chesapeake Urology, and I'm out of the Silver Spring office. So let's discuss penile implants, as that's the subject of today's Urology Care podcast episode. And I'll just begin the episode by asking you, what is a penile implant, and why would someone need it? So a penile implant is a medical device that's surgically placed in the penis to allow a man dependable erectile function whom has been suffering from erectile dysfunction. It's controlled by the man, so he can be either flaccid or erect as he chooses. Penile implants are really good options for men that are looking for reliable erectile function when some of the other options, such as pills or injections, either haven't worked for them or they can't take them for other medical reasons. So why is penile implant recommended? Why is this procedure recommended typically only after other treatments for erectile dysfunction have failed? Placing a penile implant does require a surgical procedure, which will always carry with it some degree of risks as with any other area of medicine. So we want to try any conservative or non-invasive therapy first. Um, before moving to this option. Um, It's also a permanent option. So um, once you've gone for the penile implant, um, you're not going to have the other options of the pills or injections um, because your erectile function will be coming um, from that penile implant. Dr. Mendez, are there different types of penile implants? So yes, there are actually two different types. Uh, There's the malleable rods or the semi-rigid penile implant, and then the other type is what's called an inflatable penile implant, which is sometimes referred to as the three-piece implant. So the malleable implant is always in a rigid state. Um, So therefore, if the man wants to have sexual activity, he simply bends the penis up into the erect position, and then when he's complete, he just um, places the penis back uh, down into a discretionary position. Uh, This implant's really good for men that have trouble with their hands or their dexterity um, and do not wish to have a pump to have to manipulate. The downside is that some men find it difficult to conceal the penis in their day-to-day activities, uh, so they can't cycle between that flaccid and erect state, and so that can be a bother to them. So the other type of implant is what we call the inflatable penile implant, or IPP for short. This is sometimes also called the three pieces. It's got three components, the cylinders that goes down the shaft of the penis, the pump sits down in the scrotum, and then a fluid-filled reservoir that sits right behind the pubic bone. So when a man is ready for an erection, he simply reaches down to the scrotum area, finds the pump, which kind of feels like a third testicle, and he pumps that to create an erection. He's able to control the firmness of the erection with the fluid transfer, And then once he's completed with his sexual activity, there's a release button on that same pump. He hits that release and then the fluid returns back to the reservoir. So then the penis is, again, soft or flaccid. And it's important to note for both of these options that a man's natural anatomy remains the same, meaning that nothing's added, nothing's removed. Um, In in either case, the device is simply slid uh, next to the man's natural anatomy um, through a small incision. And that's either done right above the penis or just below on the scrotum. So if he was in, you know, say a locker room with other gentlemen, no one would know um, with the inflatable penile implant in the flaccid state that he ever had this uh, procedure done. So everything looks very natural. Can you take us through some of the various pros and cons that might be associated with opting for a penile implant? Sure. So some of the benefits of the penile implant is it allows the man to show up in the moment and he will have the confidence that he can perform um, with every interaction at every time He'll have an origin erection, and this is going to last him as long as he wants. Um, it provides him with a lot of confidence, thereby that he knows that 
Um, he doesn't have to worry, is this pill going to work or is it not? Um, that anytime he wants an erection, it's there for him. So men that have had longstanding erectile dysfunction or prostate surgeries, this can give them a real boost. Um, where they felt this piece of their life missing in the past, this can, can really give it back to them in a really meaningful and significant way. It's discreet. And so if a man chooses not to, to tell his partner um, or he wants it to keep it discreet to his, himself, uh, he can do that. So, um, and it also allows him to have complete control over his erectile function. You know, he can make the erection as firm as he wants. Uh, he can have as many erections as he wants to in a day, and it's going to last him as long as he wants. That erection is not going to go down even with orgasm or climax until he hits that release button. So that also can be really important for a man. And the other thing, too, is, you know, with the pills and the injections, there's a little bit of forethought that has to go into that. You have to either remember to take your pill. Um, some of the medications have side effects uh, that can result from that. Um, some of the injection medicine require refrigeration, then you have to have your needles, you have to find a place to do the injection, you have to time it. Um, so that can take away from kind of the spontaneity and take away from the moment uh, with him and his partner. So it's a lot of men report that they really enjoy that they can just show up in the moment, they have control of their erection, and they know what's going to work for them. So those are kind of the benefits, but, um, you know, not everything's uh, in a perfect world. So some of the the drawbacks of the penile implant is it does require surgery. Um, the surgery itself lasts about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, and it's, a, you know, generally well-tolerated surgery. It's something that I do in an outpatient center. Um, but any surgery comes with risks of surgery. And those risks would include bleeding, infection, injury to things that surround um, where we're doing the procedure, and of course, the risk of anesthesia medicine. So with an implant, you know, whether it be a hip implant, a knee implant, or the penile implant, infection is the main concern. So, um, you know, we take very stringent protocol um, to keep everything sterile and non-infected. And infection is very uncommon. It's about one to 2% if the man doesn't have any other known risk factors. But it is serious in the fact that if it should occur, just like a near hip, if something's foreign in the body and it's infected, it does have to come out. And so gentlemen that have an infected penile implant, they require at least one or more surgeries for a correction. The other drawback is it is a mechanical device. And so you can have mechanical failure. On average, a penile implant is going to last a man about 8 to 12 years. But like cars, you can have some variability. Some are going to last you 20 years and some are going to last you two years. Now, both of these are extremes and they're both very uncommon, but can occur. So I think that's really important for a man to know. Are there conditions besides erectile dysfunction that would be a reason for a patient to opt for a penile implant? So there is. Um, there's a condition called Peyronie's disease, which is curvature of the penis that can start later in life, meaning that a man is not born with it. And sometimes these curvatures of the penis are so severe that it prevents a man from being able to have penetrative intercourse. Um, and sometimes the curvature and the scarring that occurs in the, the penis from the Peyronie's disease can also worsen or cause a man to have erectile dysfunction. So a gentleman that has, you know, very severe curve or has curvature with poor erectile function may really benefit from a penile implant as it can both correct his curvature and treat his erectile dysfunction at the same time. And why might a doctor caution a patient against getting penile implant surgery? So first and foremost, if a gentleman's not a good surgical candidate, meaning that they're at higher risks for complication um, than they otherwise would be, um, that may be for, you know, if they had a recent heart attack, They've got severe heart disease, severe lung disease, uncontrolled diabetes. All of these things can increase their risk, not only from an anesthesia standpoint, but also from um, having, you know, the penile implant placed with a foreign body, increased risk of infection. So those things are very important to know about, you know, when you speak with your doctor. If a man comes in and he reports that, you know, he's got good erections and, or he has really consistent function with pills, 
I recommend that he stay with those options. The penile implant, once it's placed, the penis is then dependent on the implant for its erectile function. So a man can't go back to natural erectile function after the erection, the penile implant's placed. And so if a man is young or he, you know, has very mild ED, you know, I recommend that we try all conservative measures um, until they're not, you know, working well for him before we move on to something more permanent like the penile implant. And lastly, if a gentleman comes in and says that they want the penile implant for the reason to increase the size of the penis, the penile implant doesn't change the size of the penis and it particularly does not add length to the penis. So gentlemen that have this expectation prior to surgery, and that's the main reason for their surgery, will be disappointed. Um, And so I'm very careful to explain to men that while some men may experience a change in their size and they may have an increase in their size, the penile implant is not designed to be a penile enhancer. It's designed to give back a man function um, when he has no longer had erectile function. So I think those are important things to, to discuss with the patient. Will a penile implant increase sexual desire or impact the sensation of sexual activity in any type of way? So that's a great question. So desire is actually controlled by the brain and the hormones in the body, particularly testosterone. So when gentlemen come to me and they say, you know, doc, um, I'm having trouble sexually. I just don't have any desire Um, most of the time their erections are okay. Sometimes they can also have erectile dysfunction. Um, But if it's desire that is lower, that usually requires us to look at the hormones. So testosterone and some of the other hormones in the body to see if there's any lower um, values that could be treated because that can help increase desire. But I will say that once a man has had erectile dysfunction and undergoes a penile implant, Now, knowing that confidence that he can show up in the moment um, and can perform the way that he wants to can, in turn, increase his confidence and his desire. So, um, you know, definitely um, I've seen men that have had that experience. Um, In regard to sensation, the penile nerves actually run on the top part of the penis um, and they're nowhere near where we do the surgery. So the penile implant itself does not change any nerve sensation. But with an increased firmness of the erection, those nerves are actually closer to the the surface of the skin. And so some gentlemen report a change in improvement in their sensation or orgasm. But I, you know, I never counsel men or I, I don't, you know, recommend that a penile implant would in itself change their sensation. And do you have anything else to add to today's discussion or any final thoughts before we wrap it up here today? Yeah, I just, number one, wanted to say thank you so much um, for having me come on and chat with you today. It was a pleasure. And then for the gentlemen out there, I think it's really important for them to know if they're experiencing erectile dysfunction, they are not alone. 50% of men over the age of 40 will have some degree of erectile dysfunction. If a man is a diabetic, one out of two men with diabetes are going to have ED, and it's going to be harder to treat than men that don't have diabetes. And so for diabetic men that have had difficulties with pills or injections, you know, I really encourage them to find a specialist in sexual medicine or urology to help them reach their goals. And this goes as well for men that have experienced cardiovascular or vascular disease. They also have some increased difficulty with um, achieving their erectile goals um, if they're experiencing erectile dysfunction. So touching base with a specialist can really help. A third group of men that also can benefit from touching base with a specialist is any man that's been treated for prostate cancer, Um, whether that be with surgery or radiation. um, These gentlemen can experience not only erectile dysfunction, but sometimes urinary leakage as well. Um, And there's definitely options to help those men, um, you know, really reach the quality of life that um, they're looking for. Um, so I just wanted to put it out there that there, there are things that can help. Um, so to to keep your chin up and to look into that. Um, and for any men considering a penile implant, I really recommend finding a surgeon that is specialized in this area. Repetition uh, helps build good results. And so, you know, finding someone that really 
is familiar with the procedure before um, proceeding with the surgery, I think is really important for a patient to, to seek that out. Dr. Melissa Mendez has been our guest today on the Urology Care Podcast discussing penile implants. Thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Mendez. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This podcast has been brought to you by the Urology Care Foundation, the official foundation of the American Urological Association. For more information on today's topic and for all things urology health, visit urologyhealth.org. That's urologyhealth.org.